learning from interventions. And we have three wonderful speakers this morning. Uh, actually, two of them are my colleagues from Berkeley, one from Stanford, very local session. And all the speakers will be in person. And uh, the first speaker is Fang Bing from my department. Very glad to have Fang here. He's speaking on estimating every treatment effect in randomized experiments missing covariates. So just like yesterday, um, you can ask clarification questions and we have a panel there. So here you go, Fang. Okay, thank you, Bing, for the kind of introduction. This is the first talk for today. I will talk about something very classic and simple. Hope it's not a too dense for the audience. So, uh, as the title suggests, I will talk about covariate adjustment in randomized trial, but with missing covariates. This is a joint work with An Chu Zhao, my collaborator from a National University of Singapore. Okay. <laughs> We know randomized experiments are gold standard for unbiased estimation of treatment effects. Because if you run a randomized trial, you can simply take difference in means of the treated and control group. And that's an unbiased estimator. If you like least of squares, you can just run a very simple list of squares of what outcome y on the binary treatment indicator. The coefficient of the difference in means and it's unbiased has a lot of properties. There is a, also a large literature on covariate adjustment to further improve efficiency. For example, Fisher suggested the textbook recommendation uh, uh, ANCOVA or linear regression of Y on treatment plus covariance. And later, Wigstening from Berkeley Statistics um, proposed a slight modification uh, linear regression with covariate treatment interaction. And he showed uh, his estimate is generally better than Fisher's ANCOVA asymptotically. There, there are some conditions, but if, if we are in that asymptopia, a length estimator is uh, slightly better. And he also showed we can simply report the robust standard error, the Iker Huber White robust standard error from least squares. It's a convenient approximation to the true standard error. So here, why I say unbiasedness or standard error or approximation to the true standard error, uh, our theoretical framework is design based, meaning we don't assume anything about. The potential outcomes, they're all fixed. We don't assume anything about covariates, they're all fixed. The only random component is the treatment indicator Z because we are the, uh, the experimenters control the randomness of Z. The, the, it's a random permutation of ones and zeros and uh, the, 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 the least of squares estimators are unbiased for the true parameter tau. The tau is the average treatment effect, average over individual effect. So this is a fixed parameter. and. and there's no modeling assumption. So even, even though the formulation uh, uses least squares, we don't assume those models are correct. So it's a very classical way of viewing randomized experiment. And we spent, usually we use like 30 pages of proofs in the papers to, to show all oh, those estimators are nice, trying to convince people to, to use those estimators, but it's actually difficult to convince people sometimes because uh, the theory says uh, you have efficiency game, but in practice, uh, people may not want to use it or sometimes misuse it. There is a, a, a reason, there are many reasons, but it, there is a reason, like one of my friends told me, oh, you told us uh, running covariance adjustment, but when I look at my data set, there are so many missing values in covariance. I don't know how to, how to do it. Then, then they just say, okay, forget about it. Just go back to different things. There, there are some uh, practical issues uh, our practitioners may not want to follow our theoretical suggestion. So I will talk about this practical complication. There's some missingness in covariates. So first, is missingness in covariates a real problem? I found a, a, a study from economics by Duflo et al. They, they ran a field experiment in Western Kenya, uh, trying to estimate the effect of a free delivery of fertilizer on fertilizer use, um, about 200 uh, units received the treatment and more than uh, 600 units received control. Uh, in total, they have uh, 27 covariates. And you can imagine uh, those important ones, education, uh, previous fertilizer use, gender income, um, and, and so on. And seven covariates have missing values. And approximately 20% of the units have some missingness, okay? It's hard to have complete observation. 
And this is the missingness pattern in the original data set. So for those seven covariates, uh, here one means missing, zero means observed. So there are several patterns, quite complicated pattern. Some pattern have, have large sample size, some pattern have actually small sample size. So it's, it's a very, um, this is a real problem in, in real data sets. The, the missingness pattern usually like this, okay. So the default analysis, the default analysis is okay, forget about missingness, just plugging the data set into uh, R or Stata. With missing covariates, the default choice is dropping all the units with any missingness in covariates. This is called the complete case analysis in the literature. Okay. If we don't do covariate adjustment, wrong regression of Y and Z, uh, this regression uses all the units. If we run regression of Y and Z, with X, either additive or with interaction, automatically the software packages will drop units with any missingness. Okay, so drop 20% in the do flow example. So the question uh, is, is covariate adjustment based on complete case analysis are really better as a simple difference it means? Like the answer is no, I will, I will talk about it. But this is the default uh, method. So the question for today is how do we deal with missing X in randomized experiment. There are many, many methods. There's a book by Lito and Rubin uh, reviewing all the possible methods like modeling X, imputing X, like even multiple imputation and fancier methods. There are many methods. But the goal for today is not to compete in complexity with those methods, just uh, the opposite. We want to adjust for X, but do not want to use complicated methods. Uh, want to recommend easy to implement methods like it's better still to use these squares, but using it in a particular way. And want to deliver strong guarantees uh, than naive methods without modeling assumptions. Okay, this is our goal. But let me tell you the answer I, because it's possible I will be running out of time. So just the, the takeaway message is <laughs> the final recommendation is very simple. As I promised, we don't want to uh, propose complicated methods. We call it the missingness indicator method. First, we impute all the missing covariate values by zero. Okay, just zero. Then we have a covariate matrix. And at the same time, we augment that matrix by a missingness indicator matrix. So you have, you have any X value associated with the indicator, whether it's missing or not. So you, you augment your covariate matrix. Then you treat this imputed covariate and the augmented part missing the single indicator part together as the covariate and then move on to run the standard analysis. Okay, that's our recommendation. And you can also report the Iker Huber right, robust standard error. But the talk is to, we'll try to convince you, okay, why this method, simple method uh, is recommended. It's not, it's not the best method we can imagine. Uh, and I will, I will tell you what are the properties uh, this, this simple method has, okay. As a non-statistician, can I just ask what this means? So this means you're, you're sort of introducing an extra dimension, which is you're missing this indicator and including that as one of the covariates. That yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Doing these squares. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the methods from, I'm sorry, I, I, well, maybe if there's a brief, not again, not being a statistician, what's the imputation method? Oh, just whenever you have a, a missing value, just say that's zero. Yeah, that part I followed, but but then that part I followed. But then you say use the augmented covariates in Fisher or Lin. Oh, there augmented simple... covariates means the original x uh, with zero for the missingness and the missingness indicator part. So we augment the original x with the missingness indicator. So this, this together. Is so you're not trying to actually impute what the value, what the missing value was in any substantive way. It's just zero. But... Just zero. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, that's yeah. Good. Exactly. Thank you. That's yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Just zero. Yeah. Missing indicator is that a, just a binary thing? Just binary. Right? Is it a single feature or is it one for each code, each feature, each feature, like in the twenty-seven? Uh, for example, if 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 we have a covariate vector x i, we have the uh, another vector we call it m i later, the same dimension as x i. If if the, this item is observed, yeah, right. is yeah. zero, otherwise it's zero. one. Yeah. So it's corresponding to same, x. Same dimension. Yeah. Number. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, this is the most important part. Thank you. So hope it's clear that I can talk about uh, theory. Hi. 
Um, so is the high level idea roughly, roughly the fact that um, you, you the algorithm will use the indicator variables to see whether you make use of that dimension. If it is missing, then for that unit, you will just ignore that dimension, roughly speaking. Uh, so so oh. I will explain the theory later. Oh. Yeah, yeah. There, there, there are some reasons why we, we want to have this indicator okay. part. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, I, I will explain it later. Uh, now I just want to state the method. You got it. Okay. 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 So so far I haven't I haven't introduced the formal notation. So now it's for notation. Start from the simple, but we believe it's reasonable scenario. We let M I be the missingness indicator vector corresponding to xi. You have xi the same dimension, mi is the missingness indicator. And we assume mi1 equals mi0. So this is a notation, the potential outcome notation saying the potential outcome notation is redundant for m. This means the treatment does not affect the missingness indicator. So this is reasonable in randomized trial if you collect data before the experiment, because covariates are what's happened before the experiment. So it's reasonable in, in those cases, but it, it can be violated. Sometimes people collect covariates after the experiment. So we don't really know whether the missingness depends on uh, treatment or not. But, but in a lot of randomized trials, this is uh, true by the design, because by definition, uh, M happens before the treatment. Okay. Under this assumption, if effectively M is a covariate, Covariate means not something not affected by the treatment. If we realize X is a covariate, a lot of discussion follows quite naturally later. Okay. This seems strong, but it's actually quite weak. For example, M can be related to X, can be uh, related to Y1, potential outcome Y1, Y0 in arbitrary ways. So this part is totally um, arbitrary. And so using the standard terminology, we allow for Missing not at random. Missing not at random meaning missingness can depend on something unknown, depending on uh, missing, missing values themselves of X and the missing potential outcomes. Okay, so this is the assumption we impose for the, for the most part. Huh? Yeah. So, so your assumption about mu i1 equal to mu i2 and the, the false one, do they have to work together or they can be independently checked? Uh, <coughs> The, the, which, which one? The false one depending on the potential outcomes. In yeah, arbitrary way. Yeah. But then, but you have to impose they are the same. So. Yeah. So, so, so if they are the same, so we just call this MR. Okay. So, so beyond this assumption, other parts are arbitrary. I see. Yeah. It, or basically, we say M is like a covariate, it's similar to X. Oh, it's, it's uh, the existing potential, sorry, it's not the kind of object. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me review the, the, the methods. Uh, first one is a complete case analysis I reviewed before. It's a default one. If you run these squares with standard statistical software packages, it's obvious uh, this method will lose efficiency if many units miss at least some covariate value. But more importantly, it's problematic because complete cases may not represent all units. So, so it's not only efficiency, but also bias. Okay, this is a good reason for some practitioners to avoid the covariate adjustment because they don't want to face this complexity and say, okay, let's go back to use different means. And that works. Okay, so it's widely used, but we discourage using it. The second method you got is called complete covariate analysis. So if any, if any covariates have any missingness, just drop that column. So complete case is dropping rows. Complete covariate analysis is dropping columns. If this column of X has a missingness, just drop it. So we only keep this complete covariate. Okay, at least this method, we don't drop, drop units. Then those units are still representative of the original trial. And it's simple, both theory and practice is simple. And uh, if there are some completely observed covariates, we still have efficiency again. So we use this as a benchmark in our discussion. If, if whatever proposed cannot beat this method, that's a band method, okay? Because this, this method is simple and have some efficiency again, at least. It's not ideal, 
but it's not banned. Okay. If all of your covariates have some missingness value, then we drop all covariates and go back to the adjusted estimator. Okay. But it can be inferior in efficiency if most covariates have missingness. Okay. So this is the second method. The third one is also standard called single imputation. We just impute, impute the missing value of the GS covariate by CG, by a constant CG. In theory, CG can even be data dependent. For example, impute by the, the mean of the observed covariates of this column. Okay. That's also widely used, either imputing by zero or observed means. And we can just view the imputed covariates as the pseudo covariates and move on to, to apply covariate adjustment based on the standard methods. So this might be, uh, have been used a lot in practice. Okay, people just, okay, do some imputation. And the theory depends on those CGs, but I, I, we can even optimize over those CGs. You can imagine we have to, uh, freedom to choose P, P parameters, CJ here. And we do not discuss complex imputation schemes here because uh, generally it's suboptimal. Uh, uh, imputation is suboptimal. And in the literature, some, some, someone proposed multiple imputation. It seems overkill in our case because uh, we have a better and simpler method than multiple imputation. Okay. But at least uh, the single imputation method don't drop any covariates. Use as much information as possible. Just, just I, I, are you? Do you also compare your method uh, in the future slides to a method where you actually have an oracle observation for every covariate <laughs> observed and then compare the efficiency to the MI inverse? Uh, actually, we don't compare it. Yeah, but it's a good question. Yeah, yeah if we have the oracle. Yeah, okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So, so if you want to ask a question, do you have that in your future slides? I can repeat yeah. that question. Yeah, can yeah. yeah, so the question was whether if whether there's any point uh, comparing to Oracle Oracle method where essentially you, you're you God and you actually observe all the covariates and compare that to- Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We, we, we don't compare that, yeah, yeah. But it's a good theoretical question. Here we just say, okay, what if we don't observe all X, what can we do? Yeah. Uh, a clarification on the previous slide, you yeah. talked about imputation. Uh, does this also include imputation with like contextual imputation where you train regressors or classifiers based on the other variables and impute yeah. different, different values for every sample? Yeah, that's another standard method uh, of imputation, but here we, we, we skip it uh, because the, 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 because we have a better method later. Yeah, yeah. like impute, complex imputation is dominated by something else. Yeah. Yeah, the fourth method, the recommended one, is the missingness indicator method. So we impute missing covariates all by zero. Now we call XI impute, viewing XI impute as well as MI together as pseudo covariates. So we, we move on using X impute and MI together in covariate adjustment and the report is a stand, robust standard error. So here you might be surprised why just uh, boldly recommend uh, using zero. What if the covariate has value from 100 to 1000? Imputing it by zero seems like a strange idea. Uh, but it's not restrictive uh, as long as we include missingness indicator M. I, we can show the estimate is invariant to the imputed value CG. So no matter what value CG you use, as long as you include MI, the coefficient of MI will, will, will absorb the, the value of the impute, imputation. So using zero is not restrictive. So both point estimate and uh, standard error are invariant to the choice of CJ, as long as you include MI. This is true not only for these squares, actually. If you use other methods, it's still true, just because of parameterization. Yeah. That's why just easy to remember as zero, okay. And another reason for us to recommend this is to compare with single imputation, of course, you, you can just twist like how to optimize over CG, but we don't want to give too much research degrees of freedom to researchers because they can search over different CGs and report whatever in favor with their study. They publish the results. Okay, so so just want to get rid of that arbitrariness. Okay, as long as you include MI, 
invariance holds. Okay. That, that's another another reason we, we recommend this method. Okay. So MIM, missingness indicator method, uses all covariates and all units, always improves efficiency over uh, our adjusted complete covariate and single imputation. There's no dependence on the imputed value because of the uh, algebraic property, uh, very easy to implement by our least squares. There's no need to model missing data mechanism and covariates. And it works even if the missing data mechanism depends on the missing covariates themselves. And even uh, works even if the outcome model is wrong. Okay, so that's our recommendation. But this method is not new at all. We're like we didn't invent this method. It's a very old method, but not very popular in the literature. It was uh, like the first reference I, I found is from uh, psychology. Uh, it, it, it was used a lot in observational study, which is a little ironic because we can show uh, in, in observational studies, method does not work. But it's widely used there, not widely used in randomized trial. And we show in randomized trial, it works. Because here we have randomization. Randomization justifies uh, this method. Okay. Without randomization, this can be a banned method. There were several papers here, like in both simulation and series showing it does not work. Okay. And we provide a design based theory, like without modeling assumption showing uh, this is a good idea and this in in randomized trials. Okay. Usually when we wrote statistics papers, we have to propose something new. If, I, if we say, oh, this is, this is not new at all, uh, statisticians will be disappointed. So, so we have to propose some, something slightly new. We don't recommend this, but we just say theoretically. <laughs> theoretically, this is for theory. Theoretically, you can further improve it. Okay, if you have that type of data. Okay, so we call it the missingness pattern method. It's, it's also a very simple method. So missingness pattern means combination of all the missingness indicators, many ways of the combination. If you have two missing covariates, there are four possible patterns, like both observed, one observed, the other way, and both missing. So four. And you can imagine that this can be general. Uh, missingness pattern method is also intu intuitive. The one sentence is just use whatever covariates we have. Don't do any imputation, that's imagination. Don't do fancy methods. If you only have a subset of, of the covariates, use them. Okay, so this is our proposal. We first stratify units based on the missingness patterns. Okay, first do the stratification. Second, within each missingness pattern, all the units have the same set of covariates. Then run regression using those covariates for, for those units. And across missingness pattern, take away to the average. Okay, this is also not new. If you, if you go deep to the literature, <laughs> sometimes appear in the appendix, okay. <laughs> well, nothing is used in, in randomized trial. So, so. so in, in the case with two, two covariates, like there are four patterns. For the first pattern, you have both, just from regression with both x. In, in the second and third, you have only one covariate, just from regression with that one covariate. In the last pattern, you don't have any covariates, just from different means. And obtain the coefficients and take away to the average. Okay, so nothing fancy actually. And, and in some sense, it's, it's intuitive, right? What, what, what else can we do? We don't have, uh, those missing x, like impu imputed values are fixed values. Like how can we gain anything from those fixed values, right? So here, just use whatever you have. Okay, somewhat we believe it's, uh, this method is transparent without uh, imputation. Just use all available covariate information for all units. But it's much more demanding in sample size. You have to really have that regime, all missing this pattern, have enough data points for you to run that regression. Like if you re recall the two flow example, some missingness pattern only have one unit. Some have, have two, like you cannot really run this regression. So you have to do something like more, more fancy, like collapse some, some missingness pattern and so on. But, but if you are in the nice regime with enough data points for all missingness pattern, we recommend this one. But in re reality, it's hard to have this nice regime. Okay, 
So in theory, it's better. Uh, in practice, uh, you have to be careful. Okay. So what are the properties of this uh, misness pattern method? There are, there are different ways to view it. One way to view it is uh, the post stratified estimate review. You just view the misness pattern as a discrete covariate. You, 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 you stratify on that discrete covariate. Within each strata, you can do whatever you can do, which is covariate adjustment. And this is, we call it the conditional view. You're conditioning on the misness pattern. And, 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 and there was a paper by uh, Luke Jans and being on um, post stratification. So, so in some sense, we just follow that idea, but apply stratification on M. Okay. The second way, uh, because in the paper, we want to compare different methods. Most of the methods we discuss were following the so-called unconditional. We don't condition on the missingness pattern. So we, we can show algebraically this method effectively uses the imputed X, missingness indicators, and their higher order interactions in the regression. Okay. If, I, if I say it in this way, you might say, oh, this is a crazy method. Why do we think all the higher order interactions matter? For the outcome. But again, it's theoretical interest. If you have enough data points, you can do this. Very greedy adjustment, including all higher order interactions. And, and this is a, a way to, to write the estimator like in terms of least squares. Okay. And, and if you write in this way, the theory follows immediately. OLS works, IQ Huber White standard error also works, and, and so on. And also the efficiency follows because you use so many uh, covariates in the regression. In theory, the more covariates you use, uh, the more efficiency gain you have. So in theory, this is better. Wait, let me summarize. Complete case analysis not recommended because it's biased in general. Complete covariate analysis, it's okay. It's the benchmark method. Uh, single imputation is also okay, but there are some problems like not invariant to imputed values, not fully efficient. The missingness indicator method is close to single imputation, uh, but it has other nice properties like invariance to the imputation and slightly more efficient than imputation. And the missingness pattern method uh, requires large sample size for all the missingness patterns. So in theory it's better, but you have to be careful whether you are in the asymptopia required by this method. Okay, so another summary just to make this uh, claim more precise, the efficiency gain comparison were based on uh, uh, Lin's estimate and not based on Fisher's uh, ANCOVA because uh, David Friedman wrote a paper saying uh, the ANCOVA estimator can be a band estimator. There's no efficiency guarantee in theory. So, so if we apply Lin's estimator, indeed there is a, a efficiency ordering, missing this pattern the best, missing this indicator in the middle, but it's recommended and, and dominates, dominates other methods. Okay, it's intuitive because the more covariates we have, uh, the more efficiency we have. Okay. I have a, only one minute, so one slide. So, so let us do some comparison. So missingness pattern method uses imputed X, those missingness indicators and all their interaction. Missingness indicator uses their main terms actually. There's no higher order interaction. So you can imagine there are many choices in the middle. Like maybe we only believe first order and second order interaction, not, not the GS order interaction, that's too much. And other measures uh, going down, other measures uh, can use the imputed covariates and not necessarily all the indicators. Because if you look at the data, sometimes the missing is indicators are highly correlated. If X1 is missing, maybe X2 is missing with very high probability. These two columns are highly related. Then if you use all the missingness indicator, it can be problematic. So in general, you can also uh, regress a little bit saying don't use all the indicators, but use a function of the, those indicators. If you are in the regime, those columns of M's are highly correlated. So in, in the, in, also in psychology, actually, in the uh, factor analysis literature, someone proposed um, using a special function, just count how many missing items you have for, for each unit. So it's not all the indicator, but the counting, counting the missing items like as a reduction of the indicator. But here you can think about the general, general function. And 
from the unadjusted estimator to the fully adjusted, the business pattern method, there, there are so many model choice. There's a range of choice. Like in this talk, we, we didn't talk about uh, data dependent choice of the model. We just say, okay, if you choose this model, there are some trade offs. But in, in general, you can think about uh, data dependent, like model selection and so on. The, 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 for example, the last so other versions. Yeah. How would these compare with matrix completion methods? Compute missing data. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an, maybe an, another way to compute compute x. Yeah. <clears throat> Just a, a quick clarification here. So when you say that that MP uses their full interactions, it's the interactions among the missingness indicators. You don't also interact that with the uh, also with x. But if if you're imputing zero as the um, as that missing value, aren't those going to be like aren't all those interactions going to be numerically zero as well? Yes, exactly. Up to collinearity. Oh, I see, I see, yeah. I see. So okay, if you have sorry. some collinearity, you should just drop that column. I see. Yeah, that's, I see. that's a good okay. point. Yeah. Yeah. There are some technical issues. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Well, I think we should save the questions to on the schedule and see the panel. We have plenty of time. Thank you for Okay, thank you.